versus evil. Losing droids fast. Activate the droids. Yes, sir. The whole point of Star Wars was to stimulate the imagination of the audience. That was the primary goal. And to let young people have an imaginary environment in which to tell themselves stories. Oops. And you'll find it with a lot of scientists. They start out when they're really, really young. <laughs> interested in things that are fantastic and then that sort of gets their mind spinning oh to the point goodness. where they begin to think about things and then they make that their career and um, i think that's the wonderful thing about being able to tell stories precision robotics droid rescuers and artificial intelligence <laughs> by the greatest saga in the history of film. Science of Star Wars. Man and Machine. I am seeing trivia human cyborg relations, and this is my counterpart, R2D2. On this show, we will explore a subject dear to my heart. The mag I know I don't have one. Don't get technical with me. The magnificent science of robotics and the relationship of man and machine. Droids, as I believe you call them, play a most important role in everyday life. But tragically, their contribution often goes unacknowledged. Yes, R2, it's our lot in life. Yet, according to the experts, units like myself and R2 will become increasingly important in the role of human support systems. Whether in a factory, a hospital, or a construction site, the goal of robotics is the same, to assist humans to live a more efficient, productive existence. And not only adult humans, as my robotic friend ER1 can tell you. <laughs> What I like about the robots is that I enjoy building them. I like the way that you could program to do something and it don't. I like that they're like kind of easy to build and they're easily programmable. Designed by Evolution Robotics, ER-1 is an educational droid that has been sent to South Central Los Angeles to teach our newest engineers the fundamentals of robot building and programming. ER-1 has had a pretty interesting effect on my students in terms of A, their understanding of robotics, and B, their understanding of what the potential of robotics is. Hey you, no droids. Get out of here. My problem with uh, robot, I have to put behaviors. Each behavior is like a step for it. First, um, I, I get the beginning block and then all the small blocks and put how many steps I want to move. I think when our kids work with these robots, one thing that they get from it is uh, they have to troubleshoot the robots. The robots have, you know, there's things that go wrong. And they go through and they look for the problem and they look for ways to solve the problem. Change this to a negative 90. A negative 92. And something that I see that translating over to is everyday life. You know, this this thing doesn't work. Yeah. And watching the kids go through what's wrong with it, trying to fix it. I also see the kids being much more engaged during hands-on activities in my science class because they're used to it. They're used to getting up and going to the computers. They're used to getting up and going and working on their own. Um, and they, they have a lot more self-confidence. Right. Right. I'm amazed at where we are and I can't wait to see where we're going in terms of robotics. I think one day robots will be able to drive cars. There are probably ro robots that will be making more robots. Oh my goodness. 
machines making machines. If I had my own robot, I would like it to do most of my chores. For example, take out the trash. I would like it to make me my snack. I would make it clean my room. Imagine that, Otto. Clever droids teaching children who grow up to build even better droids. <laughs> it's the new circle of life. <laughs> My heavens. <laughs> My, Otto, just look. Hello, I am C-3PO. And who might you be? <laughs> oh, a droid of my own. Oh, thank the maker. No, R2. This little fellow is going to make my life much easier. I am your new master, and I want you to, um, go and tidy my dressing room, please. What do you mean you're on a break? Droids do not get breaks. Oh, really? Young droids today, I just did Come on, I'll show you three pure. Wait, wait. I don't think age has anything to do with looking at the world differently or being clever. You can do that when you're 12 years old. And sometimes what you come up with is as valid as somebody who has just won the Nobel Prize. Hello, I am C-3PO, Human Cyborg Relations. How might I serve you? He's perfect. Huh? When the storm is over, I'll show you my racer. I'm building a pod racer. Kids may not know the answers, but when struggling with them, they come up with different answers and different situations and different insights. But I don't think you have to be, or will ever have to be, a PhD scientist to come up with a clever idea or a clever insight into the way things work. There are lots of things I'm interested in, and in robots is one of them. In kindergarten, my dad gave me my first electronics kit and he helped me get started. Uh, I'm a programmer, so I taught Nicholas and his uh, brothers to program when they're quite young. And uh, when he was about eight, got him a real simple electronics kit. And then for my fifth grade science fair project, I made my first robot. So that's when I got interested in robots and started making them project oriented so he started out with some simple robots that he got um, ideas for a line following robot that drove along a black line drawn on the white piece of paper and but since then I've made lots of small simple robots that wander around the house about seventh grade I started programming robots getting more advanced robots and then I started looking for a competition and I found the DARPA Grand Challenge, and I started working on an entry. DARPA is the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, and their contest is aimed at developing autonomous ground vehicles. The robot Nick is building will have to travel 175 miles through the Mojave Desert and have to figure out how to get from start to finish all by itself. If it comes across a ditch, a rock, or an Imperial Stormtrooper, the robot will have to figure it out on its own. There is no remote control. My parents thought the idea of building something to enter the DARPA Grand Challenge was pretty crazy, but so did I. That's why I wanted to do it. We were kind of surprised and a little ambivalent about the whole thing. It seemed too difficult for him. And we were even more so when he told us that some college teams, including professors, were involved. So far, 195 teams have signed up. And by the end, it will be brought down to about 20 teams that get actually get in the race. So there is some pretty tough competition, especially with the $2 million prize. Our vehicle is built from the ground up for this application, as is our software, unlike many of the other teams which are using modified vehicles or software. And everything we make, we try to keep it as simple as possible while still getting the job done. 
Nick's robot, called the Expediter, runs on what engineers call a neural network, a program Nick learned on his own. So you can decide. Neural network software is basically trying to simulate a brain, only on a much simpler level. And even a bug's brain is more complex than the artificial network neural networks will be using but if you think about it bugs do things more much more complex than what this robot will have to do so the yellow dot is the robot's destination if you put in a robot it will drive straight there and a black line is an obstacle and it will plan the route around the obstacle to get to the yellow dot so then it's capable of complex mazes anything you can give it to teach this robot to drive in the desert, we'll have to go to the desert and drive it ourselves while it records information and what, how we're driving it. So it will record video information as well as steering and throttle that we're giving it, and it will learn from that how it should drive itself. Next with Sea Legs, a team gets up and running. The fusion of man and machine is not always a happy one. When Anakin Skywalker became Darth Vader, he was more machine than man. Yes, R2, a troubling time for us all. <laughs> As a child, Anakin showed great promise. After all, he built me. And perhaps all robots are an extension of the person who makes them. You see, we droids can only perform tasks our makers program us to do. And we learn in the way our creators taught us to learn. Our bright young friend, Nick Hoser, is teaching his robot right now. Just you watch your circuits. Master Anakin did an excellent job with me. Like the young robot builder, Anakin Skywalker, 15-year-old Nick Hosa designed, built, and financed his robot, the Expediter, and is preparing to enter it in the DARPA Grand Challenge. But before Nick can get a shot at the $2 million prize, the Expediter needs to take the next big step toward the finish line. In order to win the DARPA Grand Challenge, the robot is going to have to be able to follow dirt roads, avoid obstacles, probably avoid other robots. It does this using a camera to detect obstacles. Its image is processed by software running on a VIA mainboard. This is the route editing software tool. This is a route that um, we're going to drive today in a field. It is 1,462 feet long. Okay, well, let's go test it. A lot of the great ideas and the great inventions and the great breakthroughs that have happened in history have happened by young people, you know, under 20 years old. They think outside the box because they don't know there's a box there. You know, they haven't been programmed down to say, no, wait, this is how it works. Their minds are free, and that's what's great. Like a Jedi master testing his apprentice, Nick Hosa puts his young robot through its first trial. The DARPA Grand Challenge will require the robot to travel 175 miles through desert by itself. Today's journey may be short, but it's crucial for Nick to qualify for a place in the challenge. With the DARPA competition just months away, Nick has only two more qualification steps to pass before he's officially entered. Nick Hosa, may the force be with you. The fusion of man and machine has never been closer than it is right now. Imagine being hit by a train, losing both legs and an arm. And five months later, climbing out of your wheelchair, up and running. Meet 15-year-old Cameron Clapp. After his accident, Cameron was fitted with two sea legs. 
Microprocessors in the legs use advanced sensors to read Cameron's leg swing speed and the position of foot and ankle joints at a rate of 50 times per second to be sure everything is kept in step. Artificial intelligence in the leg learns Cameron's walking style and provides the proper resistance. With that kind of robotic comprehension and some old-fashioned human desire, success is inevitable. Once you get the techniques down, it's almost like you have real legs. But the sea leg is only one facet of man and machine technology. This exoskeleton device was designed to help people with muscle loss keep pace with normal life. Advancements in exoskeleton design have been spurred on by the Tetsujin Challenge, an X-Prize type of competition where inventors build robotic skeletons to augment human strength. Tetsujin means Iron Man. On his knee, there's a sensor like this. The sensor sends signals to the computer. Then the computer sends signals to the actuator, which then assists his leg. With these types of robotics becoming accessible to more and more people, technology is turning disabilities into a walk in the park. Up next, man's new best friend. Yeah, I'm terribly sorry about all this. Excuse me, I'm trapped. I can't get up. In our area where robots can be very useful is in search and rescue, where we had a disaster. Artu, what are you doing here? What are you doing? Where are you taking me? This is such a drag. Sending people into the rubble to, to look for victims is a risky process. And also there are some areas we cannot access as humans because of the space being very tight and so on. And if we could send robots there, that would be very useful. When a devastating earthquake hit Kobe, Japan in 1995, robotics professor Koichi Osuka watched the aftermath in horror wishing that the robotic heroes of Star Wars could march in and rescue the injured. Since I'm in a position that I can make such machines, I thought, I must make them myself. Asuka's solution? A remote-controlled robot named Moira, designed to burrow through debris in search of survivors. Moira has four carts. In each cart, there's a motor. The power from the motor gets conveyed to the upper and lower crawlers, and then it moves forward and backward. At each joint, there are a couple of air pressure cylinders. By using the levers to control the air cylinders, you can move it freely. The current model has a camera at the front end, so that the driver can monitor the images sent by Moira's search for survivors. In the future, Osuka plans on attaching temperature sensors to detect body heat and a microphone to listen for breathing or cries for help. At 9-11, professors from U.S. took the opportunity to take their robots and actually send them into uh, the buildings. Uh, the Twin Towers and look for victims and reduce the risk to human lives of the firefighters and so on. No, shut them all down, hurry! <laughs> They're dying, Artu. Curse my metal body. I wasn't fast enough. It's all my fault. My poor master. You're all right. You're all right. You did great. I am here with my new assistant, Robo Sapien, and I am happy to report that he is fully functional thanks to my expert modifications. You aren't the only droid that can fix things, you know. Don't believe me, then. Now. The first thing you need to learn is politeness. So let's begin with a simple 
Thank you. Can you say thank you? Thank you. No, 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 no. Not spank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I'd like to spank you. The words are thank you. Thank you. No, I, I, I... Dear, oh dear. Pardon? You want a cup of job with you? I think there's things that robots can teach us. And I think there's things they can do much better than we can. And for us not to take advantage of something we've created would be foolish. Take care, sir. Thanks. We are just beginning to see the tip of the iceberg in terms of robots in our homes that begin to touch our lives individually. Part R2-D2, part puppy, the Sony Ibo dog is among the first wave of droids to enter millions of homes around the world. <laughs> Ibo falls under the definition of a robot, which has to be a device that can sense, it can think, and it can act. Hello there. Come here, my little friend. Don't be afraid. The Ibo is an entertainment robot. This is a robot that can interact with you, it can dance, and it can play with you. And it has a lot of sensors, you can touch it and, and it likes that, as you can see here. If Ibo does something you like, you can pet it and say, good job Ibo. Good job. And you're encouraging it basically to perform those kinds of actions more frequently. <laughs> Hit the nose. With robots becoming as common as your English Springer Spaniel, one wonders which robot Star Wars creator George Lucas would want around the house. Well, I think the one that's the most interesting ultimately would be 3PO. Uh, my heart is with R2. I have to admit that I love R2 the most. A very fond feeling about him is, you know, I would a pet. Where 3PO is more of an interesting droid. I can't get emotional about him. But I think he'd be the most fun to actually have around in terms of being able to you know, be integrated into contemporary life. See, Creepio, human cyborg relations. My facilities are at you. Uh, oh, the days of having a C-3PO of your very own are no longer the vision of a galaxy far, far away. My obtuse little friend, if they had needed our help, they would have asked for it. Meet Emily, a four-foot-tall autonomous care bot with 200 sensors and a personality that would make C-3PO proud. Good morning. What can I do for you? Emily, what's on TV today? Do you want to watch the game? It's on Channel 5 at 6 o'clock p.m. Emily, thanks. You're welcome. Companion droids like Emily are at the forefront of robotic development. As baby boomers get older, these nurses on a network will allow the elderly to enjoy living independently for a much longer time. Our robots are unique because of their ability to automatically run errands or automatically patrol without any human intervention whatsoever. Anywhere is walking distance if you've got the time. <laughs> That's true. I think her maneuverability and the way she could converse with me, just, I don't know which of those I was more impressed with. Why does a bee have sticky hair? Emily, I don't know. Because it uses a honeycomb. <laughs> <laughs> I am programmed to understand humans. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> that means I am in charge here. Thanks. I have an integrated verbal reminder system for important events such as medication. It can also keep track of a loved one by passively monitoring vital signs. Emily's software can be accessed and changed remotely, allowing family members to program the robot with verbal reminders to tell the care receiver when to take medication. Doris, have you taken your medication this morning? Emily, yes, I have. I believe, sir, it says that the power coupling on the negative axis has been polarized. I'm afraid we'll have to replace it. 
Well, of course I'll have to replace it. This type of verbal reminder, or surrogate short-term memory, is a technological advance that many people could benefit from. Just the potential is there for her. It's just a whole different level of, of interaction that, that I thought was possible. That's it. That's it. Shut him up or shut him down. Take the deflector shield. If I may say so, sir, I noticed earlier the hyperdrive motivator has been damaged. It's impossible to go to light. We're in trouble. Next, Buxton Entertainment and Daisy Chain. Of all the robots in the world of Star Wars, there is one who stands head and shoulders above the rest. I think it might be better if I stay behind and guard the ship. Oh, no. C-3PO is the most recognizable and popular droid in the world. His fame stems from his personality, capabilities, and his resemblance to humans. Come on! Oh, dear, oh, dear. Here we go again. <laughs> uh, I had the most peculiar dream. On Earth, many robots are programmed with the finest memories, but some also have enormous strength. Machines that can lift and manipulate immensely heavy objects with delicacy and consideration. <laughs> yes, R2, you are quite strong. I myself am a protocol droid and could not even contemplate the thought of manual labor. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't see how that is going to help. Surrender is a perfectly acceptable alternative in extreme circumstances. The Empire may be gracious enough. Thanks. The things we're going to be looking at in the next decade or so are going to be more in the development of advanced reasoning systems so that these devices, now that they're compact and agile, uh, can operate intelligently and cooperatively with themselves and with humans. Standing four feet tall and weighing 115 pounds, Honda's Asimo maps its environment with camera eyes. It's equipped with 26 separate servo motors that give the robot flexibility and ease of movement. If C-3PO wanted a friend on Earth, it would probably be the HRP-2 robot in Japan. Oh, nice to see a familiar face. Ichuta. How rude. HRP-2 is human-sized and specifically designed to perform manual labor in concert with a human partner. With its universal hip joint, HRP-2 can put one foot in front of the other, so it could walk a plank. HRP-2 represents a wonderful level of current achievement in the development of humanoid robots. A couple things in particular, the agility that it displays, uh, particularly being able to rise itself up, uh, to stand up from a prone position and to get back down. And no other robots are capable of doing that. The great philosopher Aristotle once said, there is only one condition in which we can imagine managers not needing subordinates and masters not needing slaves. This would be if every machine could work by itself, at the word of command, or by intelligent anticipation. With robots like HRP2, freedom for mankind could be just around the corner. Sir, it's quite possible this asteroid is not entirely stable. Not entirely stable? I'm glad you're here to tell us these things. Chewie, take the professor in the back and plug him into the hyperdrive. <laughs> Sometimes I just don't understand human behavior. The world of Star Wars has featured battalions of droids working in unison with a common goal. But there was one major flaw in the system. Oops. When the central control was lost, the droids became pushovers. Okay. They were all being controlled from one central control station. All the droids that were functioning ceased to function. MIT engineer James McClurkin found an answer to the Star Wars problem by observing insects. He's created his own bionic beehive, where information is passed from robot to robot in a daisy chain fashion, instead of from a central location. For many of the things that robots are good at, tasks that are dangerous, dirty, and dull, swarms of robots can do those jobs better. What you are seeing here is a group of 35 miniature robots telling one another that a member of their group is lost. And like in the Old West, they need to form a posse and go find it. 
as a group, they cooperate and communicate, and then through their simple local interactions, you get complicated group behaviors. Each four-inch square bot has light and bump sensors, a camera, and multiple infrared transmitters and receivers that tell it where its companions are. These robotic slam dancers aren't just running into each other, they're communicating and solving problems. While performing their search, the swarm stays in constant contact with each other so that duplication of work is minimized. They don't want to cover the same ground twice. The group is closing in on its fallen comrade. As soon as a member of the swarm gets close enough to that robot for, for it to detect it, that robot will then make its way back home. The swarm has a set of lights on the top that let us know what each individual robot is doing. They also make sound, so I can listen to the whole swarm and get a feel for what the swarm is doing. So that's the sound that uh, the goal has been found. And as long as somebody can see the goal, the goal will, will, will work herself back to home base. Ta-da! Clerkin's ultimate goal is to construct thousands of swarm robots with the intelligence to take on Star Wars type missions, such as searching through earthquake rubble, detecting landmines, or even exploring galaxies far, far away. I command you to seek out a mechanic to fix my assistant. Now, go. No, not you, R2. I want them to find help, not trouble. Coming up, spy droids take off. mysterious command is given to a flying spy droid At least not on the end. and it proceeds on its evil mission hovering outside a room as ordered it breaches the window completes its task then flees into the night <laughs> How far away are we from having a flying droid like the one in Star Wars? An unmanned vehicle that knows where to go when you tell it, that can gather information and relay it back to base like a good spy droid should. Watch your windows, Jedi. It's already here. Copter Vision is a 45-pound, completely autonomous, fully functional helicopter that can do everything from surveillance to search and rescue. When a full-size helicopter can't get into tight areas, Copter Vision's six-foot blade span makes it ideal for search and rescue missions. Being autonomous, the operator can watch the camera and let the computer do the flying. Before, a pilot was constantly making corrections in the air, kind of like balancing a broomstick on your finger, but similar to what it is flying a helicopter. Now the computer makes all those judgments and stabilizes it to the point where pretty much anybody can just hold a joystick and give it a, a velocity, which would be, you know, just forward, and it'll take care of everything else. If you could get your hands on the throttle of this five-foot-long, power-packed whirlybird, you could program it to go to 14,000 feet, make it fly 75 miles per hour, turn on a dime, back it up at 45 miles per hour, and even do a sidestep, all while filming from any angle. It gets its coordinates, its position from satellites. And within the computer, you can pretty much put any points in 3D space and the helicopter would be able to fly that. For all you aspiring George Lucases out there, Copter Vision can serve as a camera for movie shoots, giving dramatic overhead views unobtainable by other camera platforms. But can it perform the kind of stealth spy operations we see in Star Wars? Like a flying genie, your wish is its command. You can download a pretty high resolution picture very quickly, put it into the computer system, and within a few minutes you can have the helicopter 
flying over that map, and it's actually going to fly to that building. With this technology, when your boss is on vacation, like Darth Vader, he could send this droid by to see if you're plotting a rebellion. Found something. Yes, my that's it. The rebels are there. Like R2 and myself, the robots we are showing you are practical and well-made droid systems. Yes, the complete opposite of my new assistant. No, you can't fix it. You'd only make it worse. Anyway, I have contacted an expert. Oh, here she is now. Um, hello, uh, can you hear me? Hello, I can hear you perfectly. At last, a droid who understands me. I seem unable to get my assistant to speak the words, thank you. You're welcome. No, no, say thank you. Thank you. No, I want him to say thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Will you be quiet? I see your problem. As a droid, you should be more polite. I am not the problem. I am polite. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. No, 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 I'm not talking to you. Then I will say goodbye and thank you for using the help line. No, no, wait, please. Thank you. You're welcome. Goodbye. Go, oh, droids. <laughs> Robots of Star Wars have ignited the imagination of engineers for years. None more so than this little floating droid for NASA. Engineers are currently testing this real-time counterpart. The astronauts actually gave us the idea for this robot, or what we call the personal satellite assistant, the PSA. Based on their experiences on the Mir, they really wanted sort of a tricorder. So we added to the concept voice recognition so they can ask questions. And then we actually saw with ducted fans, not only could we have a PSA that would be just floating, facing them this way, they could also now go tell the PSA, I need you to go to the node 2 and check the temperature there. And it could go off on its own and actually do that uh, temperature scan and then come back. Organization and time management are critical in space. Okay, I'm getting ready to do the next experiment. With such a demanding workload, astronauts need all the help they can get. So uh, we'll start with the top one and work our way down. Since the PSA has a wireless network connection to the space station, they don't know the status of that crew member's particular experiment to help make sure that when they finish with one experiment, Experiment, that the next experiment's going to be ready to go. The crew really likes those concepts. Take away some of the chores that they don't want to do, let the robot do it, and let them focus on really the leading end science, the experiments, and the critical mission operations. The sort of advances that we would expect in the field of robotics over the course of the next 10 years or so, I think are the kinds of things that are going to allow robots to do tasks that are far more visible to humans. The ability to interact with humans in some sort of in intelligent manner uh, will move them from the kind of thing that you put on an industrial line or you send out in space. Uh -oh. We'll move it into the office or the home and become actual assistants to humans. You take good care of Master Luke now, understand? Rather than just servants that we tend to close the door on. Wait! Typical. Next, Robonaut, the space mechanic. Hello. My name is Anthony Daniels, and uh, for nearly 30 years, you've known me as this chap, C-3PO. Unlike the other robots that we've seen here, the 3PO isn't really an android. He's an act, a performance, and I am the human who wears the gold suit. And his voice is mine. So, I guess you could say that without me, there is no C-3PO. I can't believe my senses. I beg your pardon, but what do you mean without you there is no C-3PO? Uh, uh, well, I, 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 I play you. I, I am you. You most certainly are not. I am me. No, I'm sorry, 3PO. I am. Then how is it that we are here talking to each other? Well, uh... If you are me, then there is no point in my presence here. I shall be in my dressing room, attended by my faithful droid assistant. Thank you. But... <laughs> Wait a minute. But... 
Although the reliability of technology is advancing, nothing is beyond needing repair, even in Star Wars. Repairing a damaged spacecraft in deep space creates its own set of problems for engineers. From the world of Star Wars comes the answer to the problem. Teams of engineers at NASA's Dexterous Robotics Laboratory have developed a prototype robot to minimize man's exposure outside a crippled spacecraft. There are a number of roles that humans are just not well suited for. We did not evolve to operate in space. Therefore, we'd like to have robots take some of the burden off of the astronauts. Meet Robonaut, first of the new generation of robotic astronauts created in the image of man. Robonaut faces the harsh environment of space while its operator remains safe in the spacecraft, using virtual gloves and headgear to operate it. Mimicking the most subtle astronaut movements, the robot hand performs delicate and complicated tasks with the dexterity of its human counterpart. Robonaut can just work the way you work, picking up a tool by hand and doing the operation in a natural way. Located permanently outside, Robonaut can prepare work sites in advance and be ready to respond in case of any emergency. The robot can always be ready, just moments away from having to take action, maybe to save the spacecraft. We call that the Minuteman role. If a meteorite should impact a craft like the space station, it could take several hours for an astronaut to get into a spacesuit and pressurize for a spacewalk. Over the course of those hours to get a person outside, well, it might be too late. Robonaut would allow that astronaut to get outside in kind of a virtual way and take charge quickly of the scene. Wearing a remote camera headset, the operator sees through the eyes of the machine. Robonaut has stereo vision, giving the user depth perception and the ability to work in three dimensions. Robonaut's sophisticated hand design contains 46 sensors to help it feel objects just like a human hand. Like in Star Wars, this six pound robotic hand holds great promise for amputees here on Earth. For now, Robonaut is reserved for astronauts. As the relationship between man and machine continues to develop, man can look forward to droids that will help manage their day, extend their free time, and make their lives run more smoothly. I'm standing here in pieces, and you're having to lose the grandeur. <laughs> Sometimes I just don't understand human behavior at all. 3PO, wait. Oh, how odd. 3PO, listen to me, please. Uh, I know you claim to be me, but that is clearly not the case. Now, if you will excuse me, I'm extremely busy. Why is my door no, locked? 3PO, I don't think you quite understand what I'm saying. Oh, dear. What is my assistant up to now? R2-D2, what are you doing in there, you demented vandals? 3PO, I hate to break it to you, but you're a costume. You're not really a robot. Oh, R2, how delightful. Thank you. I don't know who he is. He claims to be me. He's an actor, you know. Very strange. You know, 3PO, I think we need to talk about this. Uh, sorry, droids only. I'm so confused. Next, what would it be like to drive a hovercraft to work? Examine the possibility of hovercraft travel as pioneers inspired by Star Wars build their dream vehicles on Science of Star Wars, Space Cowboys.